Hi, my name is Christina Maria Gadar, and in this video, I'm going to share a little bit about what makes Pilates for Children, making Pilates safe and fun for children, very valuable. This is the book that is nearest and dearest to my heart. My first book was a workbook that was really photo-driven, but this is the book that let me really feel like I was a true writer. I was writing about a subject matter that's pretty much unprecedented. No, I am not the first person to teach Pilates to children, but I do believe that I am the first to document it in such a detailed fashion, both on the apparatus and without the apparatus. So let me tell you what makes this book valuable for students. Yes, for students. I have some students who have purchased this book even though they are not teachers and even though they are not teaching children because they wanted to learn more about Pilates as a system, as a method, and they found this to be very helpful. It is also really valuable to teachers who have no intention of working with children. Brooke Seiler, in fact, sent me a really sweet message upon receiving her book telling me that she could see ways that she could use the information in this book to work with her adult students. And many teachers have shared that with me, and that really means a lot to me that teachers are seeing the value of this book. But this is really written for teachers who want to work with children. Now I divide it into two parts. The first part works with the fundamentals, pre-Pilates, mat work. There's a chapter called the Pilates Animals Workout. Uh, it's a workout that I trademarked and children really relates to animals, so I wanted to include something like that that was unique. And it also includes magic circle exercises and weights and using the wall and doing things that are standing. So all of the things in that first part are really accessible to teachers who work with children in a group setting. Now the second part is devoted to the apparatus. We start with the short pole, we go to the long pole, and then we go to the chairs and the barrels, the Cadillac and the reformer. So it includes a lot of the equipment as well. Every single exercise includes two variations to choose from. There's a getting started variation, there's an eventually variation. So you have a lot of options. And my editor made sure that the text was really going to hold its own. So when you read it, there's no need to look at pictures to better understand the exercises. But as you can see, I provide photos. I provide photos for every single exercise. It's icing on the cake. So it's very helpful to have that visual in addition to the text. It is really hard to write about movement. It almost seems like that wouldn't even work to use words to write about moving your body, but I think I did a decent job to explain the exercises with the written word and add the photos that my children modeled for over the course of three years. Now on a personal level, this means a lot to me. It means a lot to me because I was working with a young student at the age of seven who was diagnosed with leukemia. And when his parents wanted to redirect the Pilates lessons that I was offering them to their son to help combat the muscle weakness that often accompanies chemotherapy, I knew in my heart that Pilates was the right thing for him, but I was intimidated. I knew from Joe Pilates' writings that we must first educate the child on the Pilates method. I knew from Romana talking about receiving child-sized springs in Peru for her children when Joe sent them to her. I knew that she was teaching Pilates to her kids and in her creative dance classes that she taught in New York. But I was still intimidated. I was taught to believe that we could only teach the mat work to children. And I had tried that with my own kids when they were little. They were curious, what did their mom do for a living? So I taught them. But it didn't hold their interest a lot until I asked them to start working on the apparatus so that I could get a good amount of feedback before working with their young friend. So they really rose to the occasion. And so in that sense, I'd like to say that this is also a love letter to my children. They photographed the exercises over the course of three years, and we worked very heavily in the studio, and they helped me understand more about what their friends felt about the exercises when I went into their classroom at the school, the academic school, or in the basketball gym, working with my son's basketball friends on his team. So this is truly a, a tribute to all the children that I've worked with, the young boy who got me started writing again, and to my own children. I knew that I needed to write this book, even though I vowed I wasn't going to write another book after 
my first workbook. It came at a difficult time because my mentor, Romana Krasnowska, passed away the very next day that that workbook was published. And a part of my love for Pilates was honestly my love for Romana. So I had lost a bit of that passion, I think, for Pilates up until working with the young boy who really showed me that Pilates has a lot of value when taught to children. And I discovered I needed to share that experience with other teachers so that they would not feel intimidated the way I was at first when I started teaching him. So I hope that this book will serve as inspiration and a good source of information for teachers working with children. I wanna share that there are some really special things about this book that makes it more than just a textbook. I have included throughout the book a lot of quotes from my teacher, Romana Krasinovska, cute things like roll off the barrel, have a barrel of fun, and you've got to squeeze the juice out of the exercise, don't just tickle it. So I've included a lot of those things that Romana shared with me. I also include a lot of candid moments between myself and my young students. I'm going to share three of them with you now. When I was working with the young boy who inspired me to write this book, we were doing the boxing exercise on the armchair. I held my hand out as a target for the boxing, but instead of making a fist, he gave me a high five. And I thought that was fantastic, and it showed me the creativity that children bring to the Pilates studio. When I was teaching my daughter, when she was seven, doing ballet stretches at the end of the Cadillac, she went into a beautiful upper back bend that reminded me of Romana saying, present a bouquet of flowers. But I hadn't said that to her, and I was curious, what was she thinking about when she did such a made such a beautiful shape? And she told me that she was thinking about something that she had read about in her children's book for Greek mythology. She was thinking about presenting Hera and Zeus with golden apples and pomegranates on their wedding day. So yeah, my jaw dropped because children will really impress you, and we really need to remember that they can rise to the occasion, they will impress us both with their imagination and with their physical uh, capability. And then the third candid moment that I'd like to share with you was with my son doing the leg springs on the Cadillac at a setting that was more appropriate for him. And he had stopped and he said, I forgot. And I asked him, what's the matter? What did you forget? He said, I forgot to put the coin in the slot. And the reason he said that was because he has always loved pirates. And so when he first started doing Pilates with me, I took advantage of that somewhat obsession with pirates that he had to help him engage his seat muscles better by imagining that he was squeezing a valuable pirate coin between his butt cheeks. And I know that sounds really crude, but it really did the work. It, it was effective. And so when he said that he forgot to put the coin in the slot, he was saying that he forgot to engage his seat muscles to power his legs while using the leg springs. So I include a lot of candid moments like that, candid moments with other young students I've worked with, and that's in little sections that's called keeping it real throughout the book. Every single exercise has two variations to choose from. Every single exercise has photos, the quotes from Romana, the candid moments with my kids, all of these things are very special. And additionally, I'd like to share that my daughter, between the ages of eight, nine, and 10, she drew illustrations to put at the start of every chapter to add a little bit of whimsy and break up the text uh, style of this manual. So there is a lot that makes this super special. Um, it really pushed me, like I said, on a professional and a personal level. It means so much to me that I don't know that this video is going to do this book justice, but I hope that this video will intrigue you into looking into this book a little bit more and perhaps purchasing it. It is truly a manual that is worthy of being part of your Pilates collection. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. I have worked very hard on it and I took Romana's motto, if you're going to do it, do it right to heart because I haven't let the first edition alone since I published it and now I have the second edition available. It is polished, it is tweaked, it is perfected and it is where I can really say I'm super proud of it. So I hope that I'm giving this book justice with this, this video. I know it's a lot of information to take in but please Take a look at this book. You will not be disappointed. Thank you for listening to this video, and I hope that you will enjoy this book.